The introduction of super stapling means working Australians will be attached to one super fund for life unless they choose otherwise. The super reforms, named Your Future, Your Super, were announced as part of the federal budget from 2020 to 21, and the legislative framework is contained in New Division 7 of Part 3A, which is about choice of fund requirements of the Super Guarantee Administration Act of 1992. Under current rules, when an employee does not choose a super fund, the employer makes super guarantee contributions into their default fund. This process has resulted in the creation of unintended multiple super accounts. The change, which applies from the 1st of November 2021, aims to stop new accounts being created every time an employee starts a new job. Having more than one super account can be costly for employees as it can mean they are paying multiple sets of fees and insurance premiums. Stapling means keeping the same super account as employees move from job to job unless they choose a different fund themselves. Treasury estimates these arrangements will save Australians about $2.8 billion over the next 10 years. The ATO estimates there are approximately 6 million unintended multiple counts in the super system, charging $450 million in fees each year. Duplicate insurance policies can cost more than $50,000 over a working life. These insurance policies are sometimes written that you can only claim on one, meaning the insurance is essentially junk if you have multiple accounts. Existing employees aren't expected to be affected by these changes. Employers will continue to make compulsory super guarantee payments into their current nominated super fund. Employers will play a key role in super stapling with changes in how new employees are onboarded. Employers must offer new employees a choice of super fund by providing them with a superannuation standard choice form within 28 days of starting employment. Superannuation clauses in contracts will need to be updated for new employees to refer to the possibility of contributions being made into an employee stapled fund. From the 1st of November 2021, when a new employee is onboarded, the employer must provide the super standard choice form so an employee can elect to make choice of super fund. There are three outcomes that need to be considered. First, the employee makes a choice of which super fund they wish to have their contributions paid into. This is the fund that super guarantee amounts must be paid into whether or not the fund is classified a stapled fund. The employer will not need to contact the ATO to confirm stapled super fund details. Second, if an employee doesn't exercise choice of fund, the employer will need to check if there is an existing stapled fund by requesting this information from the ATO. The stapled fund is where the employer must pay their super guarantee amounts in this instance to meet their superannuation obligations. Third, the employee doesn't make a choice and there is no existing fund. The ATO will advise whether to pay into the employer's default super fund or another appropriate fund. This fund will become the stapled fund for the employee. Regardless of the outcome, the employee needs to keep a copy of the super standard choice form on file to demonstrate compliance. Employees will always be able to change super funds if they wish. If they do, their new fund will become their stapled fund. A stapled super fund is selected based on information the ATO holds about the employee's super fund membership as reported by the super funds. In order to be stapled, a fund must be a complying super fund or retirement savings account which can accept contributions made on behalf of an employee and the employee must be a member of the super fund or hold the retirement savings account. Where an employee has multiple existing eligible super accounts, neither the employee or employer has a role in determining which super account will become the employee's stapled fund. The ATO will apply tiebreaker rules to select the stapled fund. These rules consider whether the ATO has previously identified an account as a stapled super fund, how recently contributions were made into the accounts, the account balances, and how recently each of the accounts were created. If an employee is concerned about how these rules will apply to their super fund accounts, they should be encouraged to complete a super standard choice form to nominate their preferred fund. If they don't know their super account information, they should be able to locate this information through their MyGov account once it's linked to the ATO. Employers can request stapled super fund information through the ATO's online services for business. To use online services, the authorised representative will need either full access permissions or have employee commencement form permission. 
The information can only be requested after a tax file number declaration or single touch payroll event links the employee to the employer. To request the information, the steps are log into the online services, enter the employee's details, including their tax file number, full name, including other given names if you known, their date of birth and their address. The online system will use rules based on the regulations to work out and return a stapled fund in response to the request. It should appear on the screen within minutes of your request. Employers who have not enabled online services with the ATO can access the information over the phone. Agents can also request the information on behalf of clients through online services for agents. If the request was made by an authorised representative or agent, the employer will be notified of the outcome of the request. The system will be monitored to make sure it is being used genuinely and appropriately. The employee will also be notified of the stapled super fund request and the fund details that have been provided to the employer by an SMS and or a letter, which will be either through MyGov or by mail. The SMS notification will include that the SMS is from the ATO, the name of the employer who made the request, when the request was made, confirmation that more information will be provided in a letter, and where to get more information on ato.gov.au. The letter will include that the letter is from the ATO on an ATO letterhead and in standard ATO style. It will have the employer name and ABN, details provided by the ATO to the employer, general information, such as why the employer made the request, links to the Your Super Comparison tool, and whether they hold multiple accounts and the impacts this has on retirement savings. If there is an issue with the stapled fund not accepting contributions for the employee, make another request for a stapled fund using online services. If the same fund is returned, call the ATO on 131020 to receive an alternate stapled fund. If there is no alternative fund, the ATO can advise whether contributions can be made into the employer's default fund or another fund that meets the choice of fund rules. If the fund is a self-managed super fund, the employer will need to obtain the electronic services address and bank account details from the employee. If the employee will not provide those details, you will need to call the ATO.